Hello there. I'm Dr. Shubhanjan Das, a physiotherapist, academician, and the dry needling instructor of PhysiLab. And this video is about incorporating dry needling into physiotherapy interventions of osteoarthritis knee. Dry needling can help in osteoarthritis in many ways, and I'm going to outline three of them. First, analgesia. Second, resolving trigger points. And third, by improving function. Let's see them one by one. So about analgesia. Needling produces analgesia by taking advantage of body's own painkiller mechanism. The A delta stimulus produces pinprick which activates the gate control mechanism in the spinal cord. It also activates other encephalinergic, serotonergic and noradrenergic mechanisms involving supra-segmental analgesic system. The result, you get a profound analgesia which lasts between 1 to 3 days. Is it temporary? Yes, it is. So, when you are needing for pain, your clinical aims are to take down acute exacerbations of osteoarthritis knee. It also breaks down the pain spasm pain cycle and it helps to tune down the pain related muscle inhibition. For further details on analgesic mechanisms of dry needling, look into the 2016 paper of Raymond Butts. Number two, trigger point. It is well known that dry needling resolves trigger point in two ways. Number one, by reflex inhibition, and number two, directly going into the dysfunctional motor entry. Question is, in degenerative disease like osteoarthritis knee, is there any trigger point? The answer is yes. In various studies and reviews, high levels of prevalence of active trigger points have been found in osteoarthritis knee. Vastus medialis, rectus femoris, and medial gastrocnemius have been found to be very consistently affected with prevalence rates being about 60% in most of the muscles. However, a 2012 study by Henry and Associate found about 92% prevalence of medial gastrocnemius trigger point in candidates wait listed for TKR. Clinically speaking, how do you decide whether to needle an osteoarthritis knee patient for trigger point? First sign should always be a presence of a referred pain, especially below knee. Second, spot tenderness that reproduces the patient's pain. Mind you, all muscles in osteoarthritis knee patients will not have trigger point and thus indiscriminate jabbing of needle will produce more harm than benefit. For more insight on trigger point needling in osteoarthritis knee, the 2017 review by Adi Dor and Kalikman, number 3, function. How can dry needling improve functions? There are various probable mechanisms. Dry needling is known to help in improving joint range of motion. As the knee range of motion improves, especially if the flexion deformity can be taken care of, the joint play improves and so does the function. Also, needling mediated analgesia, as we have already discussed, can take away the pain, spasm, pain cycle, thereby improving the muscle function. Moreover, needling improves muscle play, that is the slide of muscle fibers in the extracellular matrix. Together, this produces an improved quality of motion. Overall, needling is a pretty handy tool to use in osteoarthritis knee. A word of caution though, needling comes with its own list of adverse effects. So when and where one should needle? First, don't go intraarticular. Going into the joint needs a lot of sterilization and there is no significant extra benefit. For the same reason, do not needle into the baker's cyst. Another scenario when you need to avoid needling is if there is lymphedema. A simple arthritic swelling is not a contraindication. Beyond this, avoid accidental needling into sensitive structures like popliteal vessels or common perineal nerve. For more details on contraindications of dry needling, APTA guideline of dry needling is an excellent source. Overall, needling is a pretty handy tool to use in osteoarthritis knee. However, 
as needling comes with its own list of adverse effects, the importance of patient selection and dosimetry cannot be overemphasized.